Hello. So, I just attended my first Catholic Mass. I did go early for what said benediction was. I had no idea what it was, but it was before Mass, so I went early for that. And really just um, the priest said some things in Latin and um, then we sat there with nothing but 45 minutes of silence so um, if I go again I probably will skip that part um, until at least until I know what you know like are you supposed to be praying something specific or meditating on the uh, prayers or just God and stuff. <laughs> um, it was, I live in a tiny, not tiny town, but I live in, I live in Missouri, but I'm up towards Iowa. And there's like uh, many small towns, like isolated. And um, so in this part of the world, most people are, um, if they're going to church, they're going to the first Baptist or the first Christian church that are huge and just too it just not my style too many people kids yeah I've never enjoyed children um never had any never wanted any in my entire life I had I don't I can't say I have zero maternal instincts but I uh because I do feel maternal towards my dogs and pets, though. Um, anyway, the priest, because I had called ahead of time, um, he didn't outright say no to my service dog, but I got the impression that he was... I, maybe he did it. it dogs that said service dogs but they didn't behave properly or something because he did say something about you know defecating in the aisles or something which my service dog is a task train legit service dog that um, is well behaved not just well behaved but does what service dogs do like legit like many 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 hours of training and uh but he's 13 now and 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 i started to question it myself because he has had a couple lapses and my 17 month old is she's about finished with her basic basics training um right now she's really we're primarily focused on exposing her to everything so in a way I'm I, Finnegan still works with me very well in stores um, at home um, but I'm starting to phase him out he's not happy with it anyway I thought I, well maybe if he waited for me in the car I would feel better because I don't know um if you have social anxiety, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and social anxiety can exist with autism, which is my case, or just by itself. And um, a big part of it is anticipatory anxiety. You are envisioning worse, you know, possible scenarios. And so for three days going up to this weekday mass that I you know, I'm not entirely sure what to expect. Um, 
I was so anxious, my stomach was so tight, I thought I was going to vomit for three days straight ahead of time. And it was like, no big deal. This happens to me all the time. Every once in a while, it is bad. <laughs> and I had reason to be anxious because it actually was bad. Like when I tried to do my dog training in a group and I had to talk, you know, I, I can talk to a one-on-one -on -one person, person one-on-one -on -one about their dog and, and things like that. But, um, and I didn't have a lot of as much interest as needed anyway for a group. So I'm not doing those. Um, but the anticipatory is just, I mean, I'm not, I, w I wasn't really even envisioning bad things happening. It's more like you're afraid of how, you're, you're anxious that you're going to be anxious and that you're going to look awkward or be mis, like, um, seem in a bad light, you know, like, and I have a reason to worry about that because part of my autism is that, in fact, the biggest part is that I don't display facial expressions that reflect what I'm feeling. And so people often mistake me for being bored, rude, depressed, when in fact I'm actually having, enjoying myself, but my face doesn't work to show that. And um, so I'm like, you, you know, and, and it kind of makes people not want to talk to me. And I'm fine with people not talking to me. I would like people to talk to me, but just like, like surface stuff. Um, but I'm not looking for best friends or anything, uh, but I don't want anyone to think I'm rude, which has happened all my life, or depressed, um, or sedated, but I was sedated. <laughs> I did take um, some Xanax ahead of time. Um, and so, mass was short, and there were, what's interesting in my community, see, there's so few, apparently, there's so few Catholics that other little towns in the vicinity are merging to, with other parishes, you know, and I was told that, you know, in this community, in this area where I live, um, we do have a lot of uh, people that only speak Spanish and they're primarily the ones that are going to Catholic Mass and the priest speaks in Spanish and he, well, he does English and Spanish and Latin. Um, and so there was only like, there was like, for people there that were of the Spanish speaking. And I'm saying that because I don't know where they're from. They might be from Mexico. They might be, I don't know, but they, and then they were to these other two people, um, an older woman and, uh, someone looked like in her forties and me. And so, and I sat in back and stood and sat whenever I was, you know, anybody else did. Um, obviously, I didn't, you know, take communion or anything because you need to be, uh, go through the process of becoming Catholic. Um, I'm going to be 
going to a Lutheran church, which is where I was actually, I was actually baptized as an infant um, in, in the Lutheran faith. My grandparents were uh, Lutheran. They're deceased now. Um, my mom, see, that's the catch. My, <laughs> this is so weird. My mom is a staunch atheist, like extreme. And she, especially when it comes to um, organized religion. And see, I have always had a quest for God. <laughs> younger than most people um my grandmother played the piano for weddings at different churches but um if there was uh sunday school activities going on at the church she would um let me go do that while she played the organ and I really enjoyed it and one day I they made tie-dye shirts um white with blue tie-dye and then they put um the words Jesus loves me I think or God loves me and um so it was like the sky the heaven <laughs> colors and um and I loved that shirt. That shirt meant so much to me. And it's all I wanted to wear. And um, my mom hated that shirt. She hated it. And I can tell she did not like that I was so much into this shirt. And through my childhood, I begged my mom to take me to church. I wanted to go to church. No one ever taught me about God, Jesus, and the whole thing. I just knew it was something that was important to me and I wanted to do. And the only way I could do it is through my parents. And and she's an atheist. So, um, it, when I was in my teens... There was a losing church that was just down the street, so um, I had a job, so I bought some nicer clothes, and I started going there, and I even started catechism classes with the pastor. I don't remember what he was called, though, but the people in the church were well-dressed and I mean like they had money and they asked me too many questions they were just like too intrusive um and I sensed judgment you know judgy I, I didn't sense open arms you know kind of feeling so I um I stopped going there and then when I was in my at nursing school in my 20s early 20s I made friends with someone and started hanging out with her and she had lived with a group of friends and they all belonged to this like church of Christ or some generic type thing and and at, and they were like super open arms and at first it felt really good like these people like me they want me around but then i started to get a vibe because later they're telling me the rules you only date within the church and you have to get it okay by this guy who's supposed to be the head of the church and then i started going this is a cult because <laughs> like they would 
I would stay over there at their house and they'd wake up in the middle of the night and do prayer stuff and other things that I knew had to do with brain like brainwashing for cults so um I abruptly left that scene um and then I'd always wanted to go but I just I always felt like my mom wouldn't like me anymore and and it turns out that was totally untrue. Um, I texted it to her that I was going to be checking out churches. And she's, she's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> no big deal. Can I ask which ones you're going to be checking out? And we had a conversation like it was no big deal. And I said to her, I, it's not going to change me. It's, you know the person I've always been I've been practicing and it's sad because I've been practicing um I had first I had all my life mostly been walking around saying I was agnostic I thought that was a me medium a place that my mom would feel comfortable with me and I wasn't entirely saying I'm Christian so, um, when I went out to Michigan to meet my biological father in the family there, they were Christian, they're actively Christian, you know, missions and stuff, but they don't try to, you know, get you to come to their side, but, um, I saw how it affected their lives and um, what the decisions they made and things like that. And I really, I wanted that. I am negative. I am so negative and I have always tried how I want to be one of those people that think like if something, somebody's late, I think negative things instead of, oh, I hope they're okay. Um, and anyway, from them, I started practicing Christianity, like reading the Bible and stuff, in my um, in secret. You know, um, they gifted me a Bible and and someone else. Anyway. Um, so I was like in secret praying and reading the Bible until this past week I decided I am 53 going on 54 and I know I don't look it. I need, my mom is in her 70s now. I need to branch out a little bit. I have autism my I like to stay in my safe place but I know what is good for me is you know I, I'm already having to help my mom um, do things so there's gonna come time when she's not gonna be able to help me and so I'm looking for a place to go for divine support as well as maybe you know support from a congregation or something um, I may you know I, my family were not close I'm closer with my biological family than I am the family I grew up with and I imagine that if things fell apart somehow, I'd probably move out to where my biological family lives. Um, but, you know, 
if you're in a church community and you're not doing well, sometimes people come and check in on you. And I'm going to need that. And I've tried other things to, I went to book club, um, yoga, you know, and it's just not the same. It's not like a second family. Um, but primor primarily I want like what I'm saying divine support is it just makes me feel good and and here's the thing when one of the things that the reason there's two reasons why Catholicism fits with me is because of the rituals and the rules and the you know all of that people with autism generally like routine and rules and structure but also part of like when you say the rosary you're asking the virgin mary to pray for you or pray for something and that kind of sits with me warmer. It makes me warm um, than just the male aspect, you know, because I envision God and Jesus as male. And it always made me feel a little kind of cool, like cold. And you throw Mary into the mix and it kind of made me, makes me feel warmer. Um, perhaps we're talking about my mother being an atheist can feel a little cold. Whereas, um, I don't. So, um, yeah, I'm going to also be trying Episcopalian. They're pretty open on like same-sex marriages and LGT whatever, whatever. So Lutheran, Episcopalian, and Catholic is what I'm trying out. And um, so that's the story. Bye.